How does it feel being named one of the UK's most inspirational teachers? I was proud. I, I tell you why I was proud because on that platform, there's more exposure for an anti-racist approach. You know, to be be honest, it's bigger than me, and I'm just a small agent of change. There's many other practitioners who are pushing for an anti-racist approach. To be named an inspiring teacher is, is fantastic. It means that we're it's a step closer towards leading educational change and using that platform to do so as well. So can you tell me about these educational changes that you're implementing within the curriculum? Yeah, sure. So unfortunately, the educational system, it does need to be brought up to date to reflect the global audiences, what we have today. And in terms of that reflection, that needs to include the curriculum, staff training and CPD to understand the differences in cultures, student education as well in terms of the mentoring if there's any overrepresented groups in the behavior system also the recruitment and leadership pro- process as well of how we recruit our staff to make sure there's a name blind, blind process this isn't just for children of color or black and global majority st- uh, students this is for all kids because our ethos within our school is to make sure that our kids become global citizens what do you think your main inspirations were into starting to make a change so my personal schooling, and I've seen a lot of my peers end up down a different path because they really couldn't engage with the curriculum. There was a disconnect between the teachers and the students. There wasn't anything what you could connect to to say, OK, I can aspire to do this. So it was quite a negative experience, to be honest, in terms of aspirations. It was only when I got a, a few mentors in school and going to a supplementary school, you realise your self-worth. Again, my grandmother's always been an activist as well. in in regards to education and making educational change. She managed to get rid of a lot of racist literature, what was used at that time to teach the chick kids. So it's come from a long line, but for me, it's come from my personal experiences and being a parent as well. I would like to see an inclusive diet where my kid can actually say, actually, there is a scientist that could look like me. I can actually aspire to that job rather than just the typical roots of sports. Why do you think it's taken so long for someone like yourself to come along and raise awareness of the racial issues within education? Unfortunately, we, we, we live in a society where it's based on attainment. So again, if it's not broke, it doesn't need fixing. What we need to do within our schools, in my opinion, is, is to make sure that we have these experiences for our kids. So it's just a shift in education just to make sure that, again, it's appropriate for all kids. So from what you said there, do you think the educational system is completely whitewashed? In my opinion, the curriculum stayed the same from even the 1950s in terms of representation. For instance, there's multiple perspectives. If we were to use World War II, for an example, that British perspective is very important because obviously we're living in the UK, but there's various countries that are colonised by Britain and hearing about their different lenses and perspectives and you know, their input often been left out of of the history books. So again, how are we going to aspire our children to get these high attaining careers if, you know, if you can't see them, you can't be them. So after implementing these policies, what are you hoping will happen because of them? For me, is to make sure that, again, we can start impacting educational change. It's for other schools to start adapting these changes to make sure that various kids within their schools, especially from global majority communities, can actually feel proud of being in school, being proud of being in an English lesson and seeing an author that looks like them.